Welcome to Just Blazer Programming. Attribute splatting is an actual thing. I am not being facetious when I say that that is what I'm gonna teach you today. Yes, attribute splatting is something that involves components and passing parameters through them because there will be a case where you will have just too many parameters to fill into the component and it might be a little bit less manageable than you think, or you might not know what parameters you want to pass into the component and you just don't wanna break the program, obviously. So today we're gonna be discussing how to use attribute splatting or what it is, and uh, then how we're gonna use it to make your program just a little bit better and make your components a little bit more robust. So let's get on to the meltage. <laughs> Welcome to the program. Now, don't worry about this. This is just how I plug my other tutorials in here. So this is the uh, the one about the drag and drop. If you have not seen that one, check it out. You learn how to do drag and drop in that one. But we're not doing this today and you do not need anything special to get started. You just need these either empty project or one of the projects you've been working with me on. Hopefully that is the case. Anyways, just get, let me get rid of uh, all that. And we'll get started by first adding a new component. Now you will not need to add this to the nav menu because we're going to just be using the index for this one because it's very simple. We don't need to go that far, but we will be needing a new component because we're going to be using this as a child component. So in this case, I'm just going to call it attribute splat. Very nice, very evocative and very close to my thumbnail. I hope you enjoyed it. it. Took me a while to make. I suck at Photoshop. Anyways, anywho, let me explain how attribute splatting works. So we're going to go to the index here. So this already has kind of an example. This is basically a component that they're using in order to pass in this title. And then somewhere in the survey prompt, they're going to have like HTML in the background. You know how components work. You have uh, HTML and code doing stuff. So what they're doing here is simply passing one parameter called title and is most likely a string back, definitely a string. And then when you act, when you run this, you will see that it says, how is blazer working for you? That is because you passed in value from the index component, the page, you know, a page is just a component with a URI attached to it into what would be the child component in this case, survey prompt. Now, the reason why I say this is because there's no, I don't believe there is a limit to how many components or if there is, it's very, very, it's like a lot. It's like 200 some, I'm not really sure, but this can get clunky over time, especially if your component is meant to have other parameters that you don't necessarily check for. Because if you have seen my other tutorials, especially the component one or the event binding one, they will go into how to use parameters to your advantage uh, to pass in uh, values. However, they don't teach you what to do in the case where you have parameters that you either don't know that's going to the component, which happens a lot, or with parameters that uh, are just so many parameters you have to take care of that it becomes very clunky. Uh, there is a case where you have like a bunch of these in here and then it becomes very you know annoying to use. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to teach you what to do in this case. So first things first. We're going to have just a bunch of parameters so that you can see what I mean. So normally when you think of parameters, you could have something like this, a value with the parameter, uh, data attribute on top of it, right? Or parameter, parameter attribute on top of it in order for you to actually pass in a value to the attribute razor. So if we went here, I'm just going to remove this. We don't need that. Don't need that. We don't need that. We're just going to have attribute splat here. And then when you want to uh, pass in a parameter and its value, you just put whatever you want here and boom, you basically have done it. And I'm not going to bother running it because you know, it's just not going to do anything right now, but that's all you would have to do. Right. But you could have a bunch of these parameters all, you know, take them space. So what do you do in this case? The first thing that you can do is use a dictionary in order to house all these parameters. By that, I mean something like this. I'm just going to copy paste it because this is very tedious, but you'll, you'll get what I mean. So what I did in here is I attached a dictionary instead that has all the attributes that I have up here. Take my word for it. <laughs> um, so what we have is just a dictionary of string and an object. 
I call it all attributes. We get set, you know, and then we start filling it in with all the attributes that we want. So how does this look up here? So because we already have that, I'm not going to bother doing this more. Oh, make sure you also have the parameter up here. And the parameter attribute up there. So this is how we actually uh, get the attributes from uh, we're passing it in. We use this attributes. Uh, <clears throat> I forget what these things are called. The attribute attribute. And then we pass in the name of this in there. But we're not done yet. In order for this to work on our side, we do need to have this also out here. So yeah, even though the index didn't have code snippet, you could add that in there if you want. So in order for this to work, you do need to have the parameter on the parent side. Then that. And I don't think that you need to do any of that more here. Attributes equal to at that's what you'll be doing. You'll be passing all that in. If you don't believe me, I will put the first string up here as test, test, test. So you can see what I'm saying is true that you are getting the values from the parent. And I already have set up how to read it from this attribute uh, dictionary by having this here. This is how you read your dictionary, a key value, you know, that's C sharp stuff. This isn't exactly blazer things. So this is how you're going to read this sum string. I'm going to run that. And we're going to watch to see if I'm correct or if I'm going to have to cut the video and redo it again. That has never happened to me before. Aha. So here we go. We grab the parent value and we pass it in. No problem. No errors. So this is also a bit clunky, even though it's better than having all those parameters out here. This is also kind of clunky to do it as well. There is another way to do this without having to write the parameters out first. So what I'm going to do is instead of having all this, we're going to delete it. You're not going to have any more parameters rewritten. And I guess I'll leave that there for now. And instead up here, we are going to change uh, this attribute to have another parameter within the parameter. <laughs> you tell me what the proper way of saying these things are. But you will have to add this as a setting. Captured unmatched values, true. So now, not only do we not need to push this in, and we don't need this anymore, we can just write whatever we want here. So it doesn't matter what the attribute is going to be. You could just write it in there. So in this case, I'm not going to, yeah, we'll, we'll call it some string too. Some string equal to another string. So as you can see, this value was never ever implemented by me directly. And I'm going to continue to read it from this dictionary. And there it is. So there's more to this actually than, than this. Like you, you think this is, um, this is it? No, of course not. It's not. There's actually a little bit more rules when it comes to attribute splatting, which I'll show you now. But right now I taught you how you can have this both uh, directly setting it yourself on both sides, the more clunky way, but it's more cleaner than the first way I've ever taught you. And then this way, which will take into consideration any other ones that could exist that you did not directly add to this. But we can override these values as well. So Gonna write that there. And we'll leave that one there. So let's see who wins, huh? What happens when we do this instead? Actually, I'm gonna show you this as well so we can compare and contrast this. 
This actually does make a difference, what I'm doing here. Depending on which side the value is on that you want to look up, um, it will either override it or not, but it's not going to look like it did. And this is where the confusion is going to pop in. So if, you haven't, if you're not already confused, well, you're going to see an example of something that boggled my mind. So what I was expecting when I ran this test is that one of these will have child string, namely the one that is on this side of the attributes, the all on the right side of it is what's known as a protected value. So I expected the child value to be there, but it actually is despite what you see here. If I go to the inspector, go to here, you see that right there? Let's see if I can increase it a little bit more for you. Oh, maybe you can actually see it. You see that? It says child value there, but it says another string on the second one. So what's happening here is that your parameter is getting passed like you would expect, let's say, in JavaScript, if it's going to be added to the div as a, uh, as a property. So it is getting passed to here, but it's not being put into the attribute list, unlike this, unlike the another string here. In order for you to have these things exposed to the list, make sure you either, uh, at least when it comes to uh, child values, make sure you have it direct directly written down here or as its own prop uh, as its own parameter um, and also be careful not to mix them because you could run into a problem you have some string as both uh, something that you expect from out here but trying to read it in the dictionary it's not going to work it's going to break the program so you could override these values so if i were to take actually uh so the, the, this value didn't overrode the what you expected to override, but it just didn't get added to the list here. If you again, if you want it to be added to a list, you gotta make sure to um, have a have its own a key value pair in, within it in order for you to read it like this. Um, if not, and I remove this from out here, then what should happen is that it will override the value, and then you'll see it in the list. Oh, or not. Oh, never mind. My bad. So no, it doesn't. So you do have to have it directly in the list. So as you can see, what I try to do, I try to get rid of a parameter that was never specified and then try to read it from the dictionary. I keep calling it this, my bad. And it doesn't exist because I had never passed it into it. So be careful with this. It might look easy, but it's very easy to also make mistakes like I just did right here. But I'm not going to edit this out. You're going to see me struggle too. And that's basically all there is to attribute splatting. Remember when I said I wasn't going to edit it? I lied. I went back to this in order to show you this one thing here. So you see what I have here is that same um, all attributes, you know, object. And I have something called child value in here. Well, it does matter where you're actually reading it. So as you can see, I have an input uh, HTML element here that reads off of the div. So where in that list that I showed you before, you were just getting the parent value, but the div was being set to the child value on the one that uh, can override it, uh, or the one that's not protected by it. In this case, it would be the one on the right, which is this one here. So as you can see, the top one got the one from the parent value, even though I'm not really overriding it here, it's fine. It's getting it from the parent value, but the one on the bottom is getting it from here, child. So the parent one has placeholder as parent value. Now placeholder is a little special because it is an actual attribute that input reads off of in order to show a value off of the HTML itself. Where in the other case, you were trying to insert it into the dictionary. So, in those cases, you will override them from the parent value, whatever it is. But in the case where you're actually reading off the div, you will take, uh, you'll do the whole child overriding thing instead. So just be careful with this when it comes to reading off of an object or a dictionary in this case, or if you're reading it off the div itself. So there is a bit of a difference.
Just letting you know. That's why in the first first example, you saw that in the div, one of them had child, the other one had the, the parent value. So that's just a heads up. Uh, I think that's it, though. That was my, you know, me trying to give myself some sanity again. And hopefully that didn't confuse you too much. So sorry for the disjointedness. But I thought this was important for you uh, to learn and for me to bring up. So I'll see you next time. Peace.